Hello and welcome to 10 Minute Takes. This is the show where we give you our rating first, then we discuss how we came to our rating. Today's movie we're discussing is Bad Times at the El Royale. Sam, you ready to rate this one? I am ready to rate this. Okay. Three, two, one. Pass See it. it. I got some defending I need to do. I just wasn't feeling it. Like we did with the last one, I actually like this new format we're doing. So we're going to talk about the story first. So Bad Times at the El Royale. I actually absolutely loved the story and I loved the way the story was presented. I thought it was okay. Thought it I was, thought okay. It was okay. Here's here was my here's my thing is I really liked the first 45 minutes and then when there's this one turn of events that happen and once that storyline faded out i wasn't so much interested in the film and i never got that interest back yeah so the way that one of the things i absolutely loved about this film and the way it was the way the story is presented is that the story is presented in a series of chapters there's about six or seven chapters in this film i can't remember exactly how many but Mm -hmm. if you've seen a quentin tarantino film it is exactly the same thing tarantino puts up title cards uh and then each title card is then followed by like 20 or 30 minutes of story that is representative of that title card. We also saw another movie earlier this year called Mandy. I think probably just a month ago that did the same thing. There's a title card and then it's like a chapter. So this movie does the same thing. And the issue that I think some people might have with this is that the first three or four chapters overlap with one another. So you essentially have one story and you have three or two chapters that take place over the same amount of time. You want to say something? That was my problem. I got so lost in the overlapping that there wasn't a clear indication on a story was being told again from a different viewpoint until I had to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't necessarily like that. There was no transition and it lost me. One of the things that I like that Drew Goddard, who's the writer and director of this, did is that he subdiverts your expectations with about movie stars is that You're presented with people that you think are going to carry you throughout the film. And then he punches you in the face and goes, no, this, I'm going to do the exact opposite of what you think was going to happen. That's not going to gel with some people. I, when a filmmaker can do it and pull it off well, I really, really like it. Yeah. I felt like he did it in this film. It didn't work so much for you from what I'm hearing, but for (laughs) me, I dug it. Okay, so I really liked all of the characters, and I liked their backstory, and I liked the individualities of all of them. But once, but then there were some of them that I didn't care for as much, and that's when it it started. Like you were saying, it was that gut punch, and it turned into a different story with Mm -hmm. different characters, and I didn't necessarily like those characters, or I and I wasn't invested in those characters. So that's where I had my issue. And you're right, it's not for everybody, but that's just how I felt. Yeah, and one of the other things is that it's a lot of quiet moments of just people talking, punctuated with an exclamation point. So it's like there's quiet, quiet talking, and then all of a sudden, bam, something big happens. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the next chapter, and it's like, quiet, 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 bam, something big happens. Then we go to the next chapter, and it's like, quiet, quiet, quiet. And I think that's another thing that I was saying, is that it just, because of that, it was a consistent quiet something big quiet something big and they were so short and they were it was short and sweet short and sweet short and sweet and i just i just had lost interest and after and that's okay no that happens and so i want to move on to the acting Mm -hmm. because this film is a film that is driven by its characters so the acting in this film the the actors in general it's another stellar cast Uh, Mm -hmm. we talked about this with first man now you've got uh john ham dakota johnson Jeff Bridges, Cynthia Erivo. I can't remember the kid's name, but the kid was fantastic. I've seen him in a couple of other things recently. He had Chris Hemsworth. And everyone pretty much owns their roles. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even Nick Offerman's in this, even though he only appears in a scene wearing a mask. But Nick Offerman's fantastic. But the real real standouts of this film is Jeff Bridges and Cynthia Erivo. I totally agree. If this movie was a lot more about those two, I, I think I would have liked it more. Her voice was phenomenal. I could listen yeah, to her sing singing. all day long. I was shocked when she started singing because I didn't know that her character was a singer. And I was blown away by her voice. The other thing, all of her singing was recorded live on set. They, they didn't re- they didn't redub it. They, she sang all that stuff you hear in the movie live on set. And they just mixed it. 
I think that's amazing. It's and she's really good. Uh, is she actually is Cynthia, she a singer in, in real in real life? I'm not 100 percent sure on her. I'd have to look. Yeah, I want to look into that because if she is a singer, I want to hear her more her stuff, and I'm hoping that this puts her on the spot if she is. And Jeff Bridges portrays someone who's like I believe he has some sort of uh, Alzheimer's of some sort, and the way he portrays that is. It's almost it's, it's like you shouldn't almost like feel like his character is endearing, but the way Jeff Bridges portrays this character and the way he sells it, it's actually is very in, endearing. Yeah. Because if you've seen the trailers, you know Jeff Bridges' character is not really that nice of a person, but the way Jeff Bridges sells it, it's like, oh man, I'm rooting for this person, but I really shouldn't be. But that, that's the power of Jeff Bridges. That's what he brings to the characters he plays. He's excellent. The cinematography is really fantastic. It's a lot of dolly shots. It's a lot of pans. It's a lot of just buttery smooth camera work and what happens is that it this might rub some people the wrong way because the cinematography in this film is so smooth and we live in a lot of shots for quite a while that it it goes on for so long with some scenes living in certain some of these certain moments that some people can start to lose interest which i believe happened with you from time to time Mm -hmm. Uh, because there's Literally, like when the woman starts, uh, when Cynthia starts singing in the movie, like the cat, like we just stay on her singing. Sometimes the camera just locks into her singing. Sometimes it's dollying and panning around her, and that's stuff that I really, really appreciate. There's a lot of time and thought that went into the camera work for mm-hmm. this film. When the action's happening, I'm never losing track of the space. I never got confused. It's really well thought out. Uh, it's not going to be like something you're going to see in Transformers where you're like, oh, where am I? When stuff happens, you're able to track everything that happens. And the sound of the film, much like First Man, sound plays a big role in this. Music is almost a character in mm-hmm. of itself. And one of the, like we, we were talking about with uh, Cynthia when she's singing live, characters will just stop and just watch her sing. And it's almost... You can see like the wheels turning in people's minds when they're listening to her singing or they're playing a jukebox. Music changes characters within the film as we're hearing the songs. I I wasn't able to analyze or actually get analytical with what some of the music meant to some of the characters, but there is something larger at play when you're listening to the music and the music's being played within the film. My final thought is that I thought it was a little much for me. It was a little confusing, but like you were saying, the ending was really good and the beginning was really good. If I hadn't had gotten so lost in the middle, I think it would have been a little bit, I would have been able to rate it a little bit higher. Yeah. So my final thought on this film is that I was on board with the, with the story, the characters. It does get a little long from time to time, but when the final couple of chapters come up, I was absolutely floored, engaged, and I could not wait to see what was going to happen next because the film itself was unpredictable and kept on being unpredictable. And the big thing for me is when Chris Hemsworth showed up towards the end, it it just absolutely floored me. And props to Chris Hemsworth, because he was fantastic in this. He's really spreading his wings as an actor. He's shown he's more than just Thor from the Marvel movies. I think that Chris Hemsworth, I really hope that he can you know, branch out as a character outside of Thor because in the recent years, his movies that have come out that we have seen have been excellent and they haven't gotten the love that it deserves. So I really hope that he can just keep powering away and coming out with more movies because I'd love to see him outside of Thor. All right, so that's it for this episode of 10 Minute Takes. That was our thoughts on Bad Times at the El Roy Al. I'm not sure what we're going to do next. We're going to see if we're going to try and see Goosebumps tonight, maybe, and then get a review for up uh, up for that later. Uh, I'm up for that. But uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And as always, we'll see you next time.